Welcome back to Seeking Success Podcast, the number one podcast in Toronto. Yes, Today, sir. we have a very special guest. We got Matt in the house. Let's go. Matt, how you doing? Good. Thanks for having me, guys. For sure, no for worries, sure. Man. Matt, who are you, bro? Give, give the audience a quick rundown. What's your story? You want the long story or the short one? Give us a long one, man. Yeah, he likes them long. Crazy. I'm thinking where I should start. Well... Probably from the beginning. Yeah, obviously. But, you know... I'm first generation Canadian. My parents are Polish immigrants. Okay. So, I mean, you guys are both first generation too, right? Yeah. So we all have that pressure to succeed and, you know, not exactly waste the opportunities our parents came here and gave us. Oh, for sure. But whatever, went through middle school like a normal kid. And then sometime around high school, I either developed or got passed down from my parents, kind of the straight to hustle and try to make things as good as possible for myself, not just with school and odd jobs, but, you know, I remember I used to buy stuff off of AliExpress. You guys know the website? Mm -hmm. Oh, heck yeah. Order things from China and then sell them to my friends in school. Then when I ran out of friends, I went on Facebook <laughs> Marketplace, Kijiji, whether it be fake beats, oh, oh geez, what else? So I'd flip stuff like that. And that was like, I don't know, grade school or not grade school, but grade nine, 10, and I would all the time go and meet up with people to sell stuff. And at one point I was selling, I think it was Beats, whatever it may be. And this guy had me waiting in the parking lot for like two hours almost. Damn. Damn. And I was like, shit, if there's only a way I could make money without needing to waste my time and show up here and sell these crappy headphones that sometimes would break an hour later, people would text me like, hey man, they broke. Oh Crazy. shit, wait, wait, what would you do in that situation? So I'm a nice guy, I like said, okay, like I'll either refund you or give you another pair. I ordered like 50 or 100 pairs at a time, right? Oh, okay. So then be like, okay, they cost me like two, three bucks, they flip them for like 30, 40. Mm. So I had some margin built in. <laughs> fair, fair. But where was it going? Yeah, so I'd meet up with people, wasted a bunch of time and I asked myself in that moment, hey, there must be a better way to do this where I can kind of make money and not have to go somewhere and do something and sell it to somebody. I'll revisit that story later, but pretty much kept going through high school like a normal person, still doing some side hustles, and then eventually graduated, went to college for architectural technology, so I can do building blueprints pretty much. Oh, shit. Oh, then I realized, okay, I looked up the average salary, maybe halfway through college, not much amount of risk is pretty big too. Imagine you screw up a building, how much money it's going to cost, right? And people so, could die too. Yeah, that too, right? So I kind of revisited my hustling side and found Forex trading. That's mm. how I believe we got connected at some point, right? Yes. You were in Kuvera, right? No, no, fuck no. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, that's crazy. No, fuck no. No, I wasn't part of any of those. Oh, okay. Some, well, somewhere between there, you know, I was in that kind of MLM right? scene for a little bit. <laughs> And then you uh, were in it. You were in Kuvera. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I was in IML for a bit, but then I got smart and kind of moved on. Okay, okay. It's kind of where that journey ends. But so, whatever. High school was hustling, doing everything I could. Then discovered Forex when I said, "Hey, I need to make money in a certain way without needing to show up somewhere." Mm -hmm. And then eventually, sometime within college, I kind of revisited it and got more serious when I seen like, "Hey, the job I'm lo looking to do." after college just won't cut it. I remember I was going to the gym with my friend and I said, hey man, you see that Porsche? I wish I could have one of those, maybe two of those when I kind of graduate and start my job. And he's mm -hmm. like, bro, there's no way if you know, you're making blueprints, you're gonna buy a Porsche. Crazy. And like at the time my ego was like, damn bro, like don't say that, you know, I'm hardworking. But then I really sat back and think about it. And yeah, there was no way. So I knew like I had to do more than just what I went to school for. So that's kind of, how I got into Forex and all that stuff. But mm. business aside, you know, I'm trying to think the best way to describe myself, you know, hard work and discipline, go to the gym every day, just a normal dude, you know? Fair, fair. So what exactly is it that you do now? So right now, I mean, my followers would know, but for your guys' audience, I offer a service called Forex Automation. I don't wanna like hard pitch it too much, but yeah. Essentially, I got introduced to trading algorithms sometime before, I don't want to mention like the cough cough, but sometime yeah. before that oh. time. 
And uh, we used to sell these algorithms to customers, you know, sell you a license, sell you a license, sell you a license. But the pitfall with that was we would all need to get on a call for three hours before market open on Sunday, right. set it up. Right. I'd tell you guys all the settings and inevitably somebody would screw up a number here or there and hey, you lost 10% while we were all up. So it wasn't really fair value exchange. Mm. So then what I transitioned to after doing that, maybe for a year or two, uh, was to set up the software just with one host account and have my clients kind of copy off of that. So now pretty much my customers copy off of the one algorithm we have running and you know they see success with that. Not gonna get into exact figures, but they're doing all right. Okay, I actually have a question talking about algorithm stuff. Is there a concern with the rise of ChatGPT and other you know, AI software is gonna replace some of these, you know, man-made uh, or I guess human-made predictions and, and forex codes. Yeah, yeah. It, it's funny you say that. Th this was, I think, 2021, 2022. Uh, Bloomberg Business published an article that said that robots will soon, or soon make, already make better Trades, better trades, better trading decisions mm. than uh, human counterparts. And this was already two years ago before anybody heard of Chat GPT, Dolly, or any of these yeah. ones. Yeah. So it's pretty crazy how things have already progressed. You know, AI as it stands, even if we record this podcast for two hours, they can take your likeness, my likeness, and produce a video saying some crazy wild stuff oh, that. For sure. We might have never said. <laughs> sure. right? I mean, we might clip it up like that, but yeah, we, we <laughs> might make you say some shit. Yo, r real quick, just talking about AI off topic, but did you guys see like uh, Snapchat AI while and out yesterday? I see. I see. Uh, Somebody was telling that. me about yeah. that. Yo, that shit was crazy. Okay, I don't know. I don't know when this is gonna go up, but okay. So basically, Snap. Like you guys know the Snapchat AI, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. Pa it posted a story of like a fucking like a ceiling and a wall. And it's like a random two second like video of just that, like a one second video. And if you asked it, like, yo, like, why'd you post that? It would literally like stopped replying. And after yeah. a while, they like fixed it or whatever. And then you asked it, like, okay, so like, why did you fix it? Or, or, or why did you post it? And it will literally say, oh, no, I didn't. I know what you're talking about. Or like, if you ask, what did you post on your story? It would say like some random shit, like, oh, I posted a car or oh, I posted da da da. And it's like, no, you didn't. You posted a wall. And it will literally completely disregard it. Strange. It's so weird. It's so That's fucked so up. I find it very strange. Sometimes I'll send it images just to, just to see what it'll kind of say back. Like if you're driving, it's like, oh, enjoy the road trip. Kinda, oh, really? <laughs> kind of scary how it works. Yo, yeah, odds, on sending, odds on sending it a dick pic and see what it says. <laughs> what do you think it'll say? You're going to see it online maybe in a week or two. <laughs> crazy. Exposed. Okay, let's go imagine, back to Imagine it's like, uh, keep going at it, buddy, or something crazy. What? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, god. why is it so small? Oh my god. <laughs> AI, man. It's that's so weird. The amount of jobs that are going to be replaced and already have been is nuts. But I think yeah. it's just opening up a new door for other opportunities. Yeah. It's always going to be something. Any new innovation, there's always opportunity creation. And then you have existing things that get either deleted or kind of dismantled. Like, even if you've seen online streaming with music, any new innovation, you know, let's say people selling records and stuff like those brick and mortar stores went out of business. So any new technological innovation, it's that way. So, I mean, I, th I feel like a lot of creative work is going to be affected by it. So, you know, your artists, your underpaid artists already don't make much money, but now you've seen people make music with this AI stuff, right? So it's crazy. But I think there are certain people that will use AI to make a lot of money as well. Like we kind of saw that like artists before crypto and NFTs making no money and then they got into NFTs and then they started oh, making man. a shit ton of money. So I think we'll see that uh, differentiating factor as well where people will probably lose their jobs, but now they'll be able to create their own value for themselves with oh, AI. Sure. I think those people will actually prosper, but it's interesting. Like ever since we started talking about AI on the podcast, we've seen like slowly this phenomenon of, oh shit, AI is here. Yeah. We're probably gonna watch back in this like in a couple of years and be like, wow, like we were so fucking wrong. Oh, for sure. We underestimated AI. God. It's gonna be like a Terminator. I, I wanna compare it to crypto kind of. Like AI is this little thing where nobody really under understands it fully. Mm -hmm. And then five years from now, we're gonna be like, holy the amount of impact it's made, right? Positive or negative, who knows, right? Yeah. But circling back to the NFT stuff, a lot of it, the art that was created with it, I feel like it wasn't just valuable just because the art, it was more because it was an NFT and it was like a fad or a trend at the time. Sure. But with the bear market like it is right now, now it's like, okay, these projects that actually have real value 
will get prominence, right? Because it's pretty quiet now. Oh, it's fucking very quiet now. Yeah. Like, it's it's not a lot of entities have, like, gone to zero. And Gary Vee said it, too. He's like, yo, yeah. 99% 99, of the shit's going to yeah, go to zero. Sure. And I, it happened. Bro, it's like any boom, right? The dot-com boom, the whole fucking AMC, GME. Like, yep. we're, yeah. when a lot of people don't know what's going on, they try to hop on the bandwagon again. A lot of people are gonna get burnt, right? That's when you get out, man. Yeah. When your Uber's talking about it, when people on the bus are talking about mm. it, when you hear it in the news, bro, that's like sell, sell, sell. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. God, okay. So talk us through the journey, man. Um, we saw in your story that you're helping many people get into the space. What's that like for you? Like, is it more of a monetary side, or do you like the aspect of changing lives? So I feel like a lot of people say, oh, I like to change lives, but they don't really, <laughs> you know, see it through. It's the people usually not doing much to say, oh, I like to inspire, change lives and do all that. But the people actually doing it don't really claim that. You know what I mean? Because it's a, a big claim to say, oh, I changed somebody's life, right? Oh, for sure. For sure. I'm more logical in my approach to a lot of things, as you'll find with the more questions you ask me. But it, it's more monetary because I feel like if you have a stable financial system in your life, then everything else falls in place afterward, right? People say like health, wealth, love, and happiness. Mm -hmm. But uh, I feel like wealth is paramount to a lot of it, but you can't neglect the other things in order to get there. Like growing up, I go to the gym a lot and I spoke to some people at the gym, you know, some guys that are doing well financially, some, some of them bigger guys, and they said, hey, I neglected my health and then now I'm revisiting it and it's just not as easy to kind of bounce back and bounce back into shape. I should have done sure. this when I was younger. Mm. So I feel and like believe in building everything all at once, which is sometimes difficult to do and circling back, like that's kind of what I want for my clients and the people that I work with to have that opportunity to do that, whether it's spend extra time with their kids, not need to work two jobs just to get by. We mm. see how expensive food's getting now, right? It's crazy. So it, it's not like you're, oh, I'm in a, on a yacht in Miami kind of thing, right? <laughs> it's more like your day-to-day -day average person just making it fine. Yes. Sometimes we're clouded in the online space you know, we get obsessed with making an extra five, 10, 20 K a month, mm -hmm. but we don't think of your normal dude, normal guy, normal family that needs an extra one, two K a month. And that's, that's going to be paramount in their lives. Right. That's true. It's perspective, I guess. Yeah, for real, man. So I, let's talk about it. You talked about a yacht in Miami. What's one of the craziest purchases you've made? Uh, I'm like super conservative when it comes to a lot of purchases. Um, I would honestly just say my Tesla. I nah, bought it. No, 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 fuck that. No, no, we want something else, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, that's like a, a car. It's like, you know, you had to buy it, whatever. Something, something like crazy. Crazy? I like, mean, that, that, like, realistically, like, you didn't really have to, but you kind of did. Well, I was in Portugal, what, two weeks ago. I bought, like, a passport holder, which I'll probably use only, like, every time I A passport travel. holder? Yeah, like a Louis one. <laughs> okay, okay. I put my initials on Thank it. Thank the I, fuck God you said Louis, bro. I'm like, no fucking way you're talking about a passport holder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much did it cost you? I think it was, like, six bills. Wow. Okay. But it was pretty dope. The guy, like, embossed my initials in it. So, oh, shit. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> so, you know, a little keepsake. I, I'm more of, like, a. I like experiences better. Maybe my most impulsive experience. I, I did a helicopter tour over the Grand Canyon. So oh shit! How much did that cost? Crazy. I uh, like two k. Oh shit! Yeah. How long was it? Like thirty minutes. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's pretty dope, though. That's one like of the craziest one experience. I would recommend anybody that goes there do it. Really? I've, I'm not like you know roller coasters, whatever. I'm not that scared. Scared, bro. Really? Because really? they take you off the edge of the Grand Canyon, and they do it in this way. And there's a, like a three kilometer drop right underneath you. Damn. And I paid extra for the front seat. So then the glass goes underneath. So you oh, can wow. literally see all oh, the way down. Scariest oh, wow. thing. You'd be lying if you said you weren't scared. <laughs> yeah. Do you yeah. genuinely, are you like afraid of heights? No. No? No. Interesting. Was, is that your first time in a helicopter? Yeah. I mean, it's like a mix of everything. Mix of everything. Yeah, because we, we did the helicopter tour when we were in Vegas. And we're also they let you on a helicopter? Front. Oh, heck yeah, bro. Let me drive that thing. Nah, I'm joking. They didn't let me drive <laughs> it, but um, we're on that tour. And same thing, like, because the glass, I guess it's like the opposite panoramic where, like, the fucking floor is yeah, yeah, through. Yeah, yeah. Like, the CN um, Tower, like, the fucking shit's. But it was night. So, yeah, like, yeah. it was, uh, like, oh, but okay. again, I, I've been to the point where we've done a lot of thrill seeking things before where, like, starting to get really desensitized to, like, anything like that. But I mean, it was cool. But I think during the day, it's probably a whole fucking. Literally night and day. It's like a movie difference. in front of you, man. I was like looking around. I took videos on the phone, but I'm like, yeah, I can't just buy it. I'm looking at the view. I'm looking at my phone. I'm like, there's no point of even Literally. taking the video. Literally. Damn. 
That's actually pretty fucking that's sick. Now I gotta ask, are you in a committed relationship? Yeah, um, so I have my fiance now. Oh, nice. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, Congrats. Yeah. Uh, we got engaged on the 30th, so that's like two weeks ago now. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very recent. Very recent. <laughs> that's pretty sweet, that's man. Dope. That's fucking awesome. How's that like? It's uh, a little different. <laughs> wait, I mean, wait, why did you react like that? <laughs> no, no, like... <laughs> like, it's... Uh, <laughs> we've been dating for nearly five years, right? Nice. So now it, the only difference is calling her my fiancé and planning the wedding, really. Mm. Okay. Right. Is that what's that like having a, a, a stable female in your corner, especially now reaching these heights of success? Do you think it helped you in a way, or, or was it more of a pushback? It's difficult to find the person that's going to support you through everything that you're doing. Mm. And like you guys are in relationships, or oh, I'm single, married. married, single, married. Yeah. So, like when you're looking for that person, you I'm a very blunt person. I was like, hey, a lot of the time. I'm going to be on my computer working on stuff. We may not be able to spend a lot of quality time, but when I'm free and I'm open, hey, I'm there. But you got to set those boundaries or else like, you know, that person's going to take over your life. You're going to have that kind of regret where you spend too much time with the person and then not as much on your business. Maybe that might not unfold. And then you, you, you don't want to live a life of regret, right? That's mm, number one thing. Sure. So, you know, just having that boundary is really big. And then Again, having somebody that you can consider a partner that helps you with things. Mm. So I'm, I'm slowly easing my fiance into doing some small stuff for me Same. at first. And As jokes, yeah. Maybe you never know if you're doing a sales call, it might be my fiance doing it. <laughs> that's, that's pretty that, dope. That's man. the goal eventually, but that's yeah, so, pretty dope. So what, what like pushed you to propose? That's actually a good question. I was thinking about that on the way here because I figured you'd ask. Um, <laughs> so I was having a, a lunch meeting with, I think it was a client or something, and he was asking me about my relationship, how it is. And I was like, yeah, like I operate already as if she's already my wife. Mm. So in that moment I was like, well then why don't I just do it? You know, if I'm already operating that way, I may as well just make it official. Fair. Like it just made sense. Yeah. All right. Damn. I had to ask a question, man. How much does that ring? I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sure you guys can pull up the photos or whatever, but not as much as the car, but close. <laughs> really? Yeah. So like 50? No, no, less, less, less. Like 30? Like around 20. Oh, shit. Colin. Fucking perfect. And did you let her pick it out or did you actually pick one for her? No, no, I picked it for her. Ah. I have really expensive taste though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately. Like I went to go look for colognes at one point and no price labels. I smelled 20 colognes. I'm like, oh, I like this one. And then you see their face kind of go pale. Oh, that's the most expensive one. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> Like anything, I don't know what it is. I always have the most expensive taste. Really? Rich taste. Oh, that's good, yeah. man. Yeah. That's fucking, that's a great quality to have, man. That's crazy. Because engagement rings, weddings and stuff. For me, actually, when I proposed to my wife, two, it was a month or two months before, because we're religious, so like, mm -hmm. I had to ask her dad and whatever. Yeah, yeah, I asked so, I. Yeah, so before that, like, so around that time, actually, I took her to go pick a ring. So I'm like, I don't want to fuck this up. Like, mm -hmm. I don't, I'm like, I'm like, no budget. We'll go and pick something else. So she picked something. And I'm like, okay, we'll pick it up. Two, three, in two, three months, like order it. I told the guy that. He's like, yeah, sure. Yeah. We left. My dad was still in there. He closed I gave him my card. He closed the transaction, grabbed the ring, and I proposed for like maybe a couple weeks later. And she didn't see it coming because that was my biggest concern. I'm like, how can I let her pick the ring but also have a, a complete fucking surprise, you yeah. know? Mm. I think the surprise is like the That's number the one thing. That's the best part. It's like one of like my fucking, like one of the most memorable moments for me is proposing to my wife more than the actual wedding, even though I was with her for like fucking six years. Right, yeah. but the actual proposing part was just—it was so special because she was caught off guard. She was crying. I had none of my friends or family there because I'm like, it's just—it's—it's it's not me. I'm like, I just want yeah. to be a more romantic side that mm. I don't want to lead on. So I had <laughs> none of my friends and my family there. Okay, but it was crazy. There's about thirty, like maybe like no exaggeration, 30, 40 people because it was downtown, just gathered oh, okay. around, made a whole fucking. Yeah, because they had like the bro, whole people come center. out of nowhere. Like fucking I proposed on a, a cliff in Portugal on the coast. Oh, wow, damn. We went on the trip with my parents and my okay. brother and his wife, but then it was just us at the time. And then somehow after I proposed, I turned around. There's like 30 people yeah. out of nowhere, bro. It's like some boardwalk. Spawned. Yeah. <laughs> God, it was so. horrible. The like paparazzi just come out of nowhere. All right. All right. So we talked. We talked about proposing and uh, getting on our knees and stuff like that. But let's talk a bit about forex. All right. So a lot of people are confused about forex. Forex is a scam because of Kuvera and IML and mm -hmm. all these MLMs and real quick we've all dabbled in the industry of forex some more than others um we've all lost money and we've all made money uh why don't we just quickly go around and just let the people know what it actually is 
Yeah, Forex stands for the foreign exchange market. I don't want to do a whole <laughs> beginner course here, but it stands for the foreign exchange market. It's pretty much the market of currencies. You know, world has different currencies, US dollar, Canadian dollar, Great British pound, etc. And in this market, you can kind of compare it to the stock market, whereas in the stock market, you buy and sell stocks. In the currency market, you buy and sell currencies, mm -hmm. except you can't just buy one. You could, but it's the exchange where you make the money, so you need to buy into a currency pair. So it'll be like the US dollar versus the Canadian dollar. Mm -hmm. When that value fluctuates, you can get in and out of trades and profit on the way up or profit on the way down, depending if you buy or sell it. That's exactly. The easy way I can explain it. And, and to clarify, like there's a lot of people that are in these like Forex MLMs, like uh, IML or yeah. whatever. Guys, do your research is all we're gonna say. You know, we're not in the, we're not competing with them anymore, so I'm not gonna talk shit about them. Before I used to talk a lot of shit about them, but honestly yeah. at this point it's like I could care less, do your thing. Um, but do your research is I guess all we have to yeah. say. Hate rarely comes from above. So when people ask me my opinion about those MLMs and such, I just say, you know, that's, it's not my audience now. My audience is more like investors rather than active traders. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I differentiate myself. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to knock traders. You know, you can make a good living trading. It's just you're going to be glued to a screen. And especially us, you know, the time zone we're in, you need to be up in the middle of the night to trade London sessions. So oh, yeah. Fucking literally, bro. We yeah. have timers going waking up at night <laughs> to fucking trade. That's it's it's cool time. for two weeks until you're off your circadian rhythm and then it's like bro it's cool bro. until you blow three accounts then it's like huh maybe it's not for me yeah <laughs> yeah god no that's interesting man forex has been like a fun thing for me because every time i do dabble in it because i'll dabble in it from time to time yeah i just treat it like it's gambling a lot of people do you know yeah. but, but I, i'll i'll say it like that too so then when i lose the money i won't feel bad like hey Umar. I feel like you're, you're starting off with the wrong mindset. But no, like no, no. you're destined to lose money. Bro, when you think now when like I lose that. money, I look myself in the mirror. I go, Umar, listen, did you have a good fucking time gambling at the casino? Fuck yeah, I did. <laughs> All right, back in the game. Try again in two years. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's better than pulling the slots. And yeah, stuff. So it's, it's about to be two years since. Uh, I know. It's the two year anniversary. Should we, give it a shot? Should, we do, should we open the biggest account we ever fucking opened? <laughs> <laughs> and put it all in one trade. Go all in. Go fucking all We're in. We're selling man. gold. All or fucking nothing, bro. Yeah, all or fucking nothing. What, two years since what? Oh, we, I think, no, for, it's probably been what, like three ish years since we last started trading Forex? No, oh, okay. during the crypto bull run, I started trading Forex a little bit because yeah. I just had some fun money. So I, uh, yeah. fucking Forex. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't think yeah. I, don't, I don't Bro, it's so fun because you know what I did the second time around? I'm like, let's just have. Uh, like actual fun, just get dopamine <laughs> rushes. So like anytime I see it go to blue, I'm talking about a couple bucks, like seven bucks, eight bucks, 10 bucks, sell. And I just keep doing that. And then one day I got cocky. I'm like, yo, I haven't lost a train so long. Let's go in big. Wiped. Bro, I, that was on the white me. I've had to talk people out of that. My boy was like, yo, Matt, it's been three weeks. I haven't lost. I can't lose. I'm like, bro. <laughs> Delete the app. <laughs> Fuck. As soon as I heard that, I was like, bro, please. Yeah, what's the most amount of money you've lost in one trade? Ooh. Uh, it's up there, like, myself, my own funds, or if we're talking, like... No, generally. Like, something, gen yeah. Generally, like, okay, over sure. six figures. Six figures in one yeah. trade. Fuck. Yeah. Wow. Like, you know, sometimes we'll go for swing trades, and sometimes they don't work out. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, this is when you have an account that's, like, sizable, in where six ends. figures is, like... For sure. You have that. Okay, okay. What there. about your own funds? My own funds, bro. I've slapped a 5K account easy. Like, just. Really? I like to fund accounts and kind of try to flip them sometimes. <laughs> a lot of people do. Because, like, for my clients and stuff, I don't do any risky stuff. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then for my own funds, I either take what I'm doing for them and just, like, 5, 10x <laughs> the risk, or I'll just do some fun trades, kind of like yourself. You know? Yeah, just dabble. Can't resist the US 30, the gold, and all yeah, that for stuff. Yeah, bro, yeah. the gold gets you, bro, because that chart is so fucking yeah. volatile, bro. You're sitting there, like, yo. It's going down. Yeah, yeah, Fucking yeah. Fucking then it spikes up. Yo, why is losing money on MetaTrader so amusing compared to like anything else? Like I you lose know, money doing bro. anything else, it fucking I sucks. Know, but losing money on this is just funny. People like, say that, that the Robinhood <laughs> screen's super addictive, but like the MetaTrader one gets me going, bro. Oh, 100%. Fuck, bro. Okay, what about what about the flip side? What's the most amount of money you've made in a trade on your own account? It's been over 50K. Oh, wow. shit. Yeah. I, funny enough, like this is when I was managing some more clients because I, I kind of scaled back over the months, like, I don't know <clears throat> how close do you follow me, but I kind of had my heyday, then I scaled back a little bit with a, a few less clients, and then now kind of I'm ramping back up. Uh, just, you know, better strategies, less risk kind of thing, but pretty much when I had, you know, my most amount of clients, I was with my dad, and I was explaining everything to him, like, hey, like, <laughs> so this works, you know, 
we're managing around this much. For every percent I make, it's like, this is how much I make. And then news hit. I had, I think, four or five CAD trades. And it was CPI, CAD CPI. Remember, like, it was yesterday. Because I was looking at the trading view, had a, like, thing, zoomed in. And I'm like, all right, okay. News hits in two minutes. It's like, so what are you going to do? I'm like, just sit here. I got five trades. It goes, boop. I'm like, yeah, I just made 50 grand for my clients. He's like, what? Damn. I'm like, yeah. That's it. <laughs> You know? oh, that's pretty dope. How do your parents feel about that? I'm coming from an immigrant background. They yeah. probably preferred you go to university and, and get a real job. So how, what's the contracts like now versus when you just got started in the training game? Well, I mean, you can't make everybody happy. For sure, <laughs> for sure. But it, it's it's the means that makes the man at the end of the day. Okay. Ooh. Right? So it, it's not necessarily doing the same thing that everybody else does to achieve the same result. Sometimes yeah. you need to go down your own path. And at first, like you mentioned, immigrant parents, it's not what they'd love to hear. Yeah. But once they see the result, then it makes them happy. Oh, for sure. You know, I was working at this time as well, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's not, <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, it's easy to manage both. Oh, for sure. Okay, that's actually a great point that you brought up because I was the same, same way. Yeah. Before I was able to quit my full nine to five job, I was very conservative. I made enough money online with my YouTube and my side hustles. I'm like, okay, I could fully sustainably replace my current income. And then I quit my nine to five, went all in. Yeah. But a lot of people have the approach like, no, fuck it, quit your job, jump out of school and just go all in before you made a single dime. What's your take on that? It's a good mindset to have, but it's a dangerous mindset to have. Mm. Just because in this day and age, you, if you have the availability to quit school, whatever, cool. That means you have nobody relying on you. Mm. right? You don't have that pressure behind you. For sure. We all have, all have immigrant parents, you know? People say, like, oh, the brown parents are strict, whatever. Don't don't get it twisted, man. The white oh, parents sure. are just as bad. Oh, for sure. <laughs> um, but when you have that pressure behind you, you need to perform. So what's the best way? Doing multiple things at once. Yeah. Right? Have that same mindset while doing both as if you didn't have the school and you'll excel. Like, that's kind of what mm. I did, right? You know, I was working a job that was making, I don't know, less than four or five K a month. And then my online business made me 20 K that month. Mm. So like, yeah. you know, you have a pep in your step the next day going into work, right? Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, for sure. I, think, I think it's interesting because I feel like I'm the outlier here. Like I, but I think it also depends. Like when you dropped out or sorry, not dropped out, um, quit your job, you were what, like 20? What, 21, 21 maybe? Yeah. I think it's different because like when I dropped out, I was, 18 so it's like mm -hmm. like you said like it's not like i fucking had anyone relying on me to like put food on the That's table the thing too so i think it depends on your age as well which is why i think a lot of people should like i think i'm grateful that i made that decision yeah. like as fast as i did because let's just say i went to school for a year and then i made that decision then it's like a year gone and the opportunity cost is also fucked that's what I was gonna talk about. Decisiveness to make quick decisions <clears throat> is what separates successful people and unsuccessful people. Mm. Mm. A lot of people will ponder on a decision, ask it in comment sections to their favorite YouTuber or Instagrammer, <laughs> wait for them to say, oh yeah, John, you should quit your job, you know? And they won't make decisions for themselves mm. rather than evaluate everything they have at hand, make the decision that makes the most sense and kind of progress. They'll just sit and ponder for years to come. I think even if you don't make the right decision, making the wrong decision, but making that decision fast will also do better than, oh, for sure. what is it, analysis paralysis. You don't need to make the right decisions. You need to make your decisions right. You don't need to make the right decisions. You need to make your decisions right. Wow. Fair. That's well said. Yeah, that's good. That's fucking well that's said. A, that's good. That might fly over some people's heads. For real, <laughs> for real. But no, to like piggyback off your saying, is uh, last night I was reading um, Relentless by Tim Grover, and there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a part that really stood out where he said... Um, the ultra successful men, right? He calls them, uh, what does he call them? He calls them cleaners, mm -hmm. right? They they do what has to be done and they don't care about anything else, yeah. including their own emotions, right? Think about it, right? It might not be the most fucking sexiest thing to sit in front of a computer screen to, let's just say you're a fucking a, a, a high level editor, sit in front of a computer screen for hours to edit and edit and edit. But if you know that's what you have to do to secure the bag, to be the best there is in what you're doing, you just have to fucking, you got to do it. And then you got to forget about everything else, your own personal feelings, what people think about you and everything, right? So it's like just going all in and committing. Right? I like that, I like that. Uh, literally a funny story, fucking, I was talking to this girl the other night and like, so I'm leaving to Europe, uh, like fucking next week. Yeah, hey, I was going to ask, you got to tell us where you're going, but continue the yeah, story. Yeah, I'll tell you guys. Um, and so we've been like batch recording these podcast episodes and holy fuck, I shit you not. I, I'm like, we're both probably so sick and tired of doing podcasts. We've done what, like, 
Like literally 12 Almost. in the past like week and a half. I think more than that. Gee, thanks guys. Probably. Yeah, <laughs> 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 we've, we've done a lot. And we're like, fuck, we don't want to do podcasts for a while. Yeah. And I was like telling her, I was like, I was like, yeah, like we're doing all this shit. And she's like, yo, you sound so stressed. And I was like, yeah. And she's like, yeah, but like, that's not good. And I was like, okay, but like if I don't do it, who's going to do it? Like yeah. someone has to do it. Someone has to do the work. Someone has to fucking, because sure, we could take a break while I'm on vacation, but fuck that. No. And it's like, the work has to be done, no matter what. And Andrew Tate talks about this a lot. And I, I think I really respect that. Like, even the cleaner example, or like someone who has to like do the dishes, or like whatever. Like someone has to do that. Someone has to, yeah. yeah. You can't, you can't knock like people's jobs or things that need to get done, right? Within any business, even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every business has the low level things. That's where everybody needs to start and kind of go from there, right? Even the high level things. Like usually the high level things are they might like physically be easier, but they're way more stressful. Yeah. And like someone yeah. has to bear that stress, oh, and sure. someone has to have that in their mind state, just for the sake of. It has to get done. Like it's a very simple concept, but I don't know. I think it, yeah, it's, it's under acknowledged. God. Yeah. Fair. Matt, what do you would you say is one of your biggest goals for the next um, span of the next ten years? It's too far out. Too far. You know out? how much can change? Okay, imagine. Mm. Rewind, pre-COVID. <laughs> I don't want to say the word, but <laughs> if somebody told you, hey, there's going to be these AIs that can uh, write full essays with you typing in a sentence, you'd be like, shut up. Yeah. Fair, yeah. True. Imagine in the next 10 years. So you can't think that far ahead. I can think of the next goal and kind of reevaluate from there. Because I tell my fiance this a lot of the time, like you need to make the best decision with all the information at hand and move forward. Mm. You, you can't think of step A to Z when C is uncertain. Mm. Mm. Okay, fair. A lot of people love planning out everything, but then, okay, this changes and then rest of their stuff that you've spent months planning doesn't even work. But to answer your question and give you an answer, the next goal is really just to pursue location freedom. Like I feel like a lot of the time when people build up businesses, they have to be strapped down to a location. I have the freedom where I don't need to be. So I want to exercise that freedom where, whether it's traveling Europe, I just came back from Portugal, but I want to go back. I'm Polish. So I want to go back to Poland, kind of see, how it is out there. I mean, I went years ago, but not recently. So mm. I want to go to a couple countries there and kind of explore that travel entrepreneur life. Like the, the digital nomad lifestyle. Yeah, but not not as bootstrapped. I like going out and seeing nice things. I feel, I feel like uh, it's almost cringe now to be a digital nomad. Like, remember when there was like a phase where like everyone yeah, and their mom went to Bali to. and fucking, yeah. yeah. and now it's like, all right, bro, like, you know, like fuck off. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So where are you going in Europe? <laughs> Yo, so I'm going to uh, Switzerland, uh, Italy, and London. Okay. Yeah. So it should be pretty fun. One, one week each? Uh, I'm, so it's 10, no, 11 days London. Uh, so I'm road tripping. So okay. the hotels are, I think I'm doing like five or six days in Italy. Mm-hmm. And then fucking, I can't do the math in my head, but the rest yeah. of the time is in Switzerland. I've I've heard I haven't been, but everybody raves about Italy, not just the Italians. The Italians I hear it, I'm like, all right. Yeah, yeah. No, I've never been to Italy before either. So it's my first time. My mom lived there for a, a couple of years. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So um, I know, right? I'm brown. <laughs> no, so it's pretty cool. Uh, so she's she's she loves it, and so mm-hmm. yeah, we're just headed down there. But Switzerland's probably the be- most beautiful country I've ever been so to. So she lives out there now. No, 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 no. She oh. she's here now, but like she's okay. lived there for a couple of years, and oh. she, this is her first time going back since then. She was a child. Oh, that's when she was amazing. There. Yeah, yeah. It, it should be fun. I'm excited for London the most, and Switzerland is just like such a, yeah, it's just so beautiful. Have you ever been to Switzerland? No, that that's why I want to explore Europe. Yeah. I've only been to really Portugal and Poland, and that's it. Oh. And there's so much to explore there. Where I'm like, man, going to Portugal the past few months or two weeks ago mm-hmm. really made me realize, hey, I gotta get out there. I gotta travel a little oh, bit more. Sure, bro. bro it's always that there. first trip that goes like, what the fuck? Like <laughs> everything's so different like, here. Why the fuck am I staying in my home yeah. environment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? All the time and energy you've been wasting just staying here not wasting but you don't realize you're wasting it until you see what's on the other side oh for sure because you're missing out on so much yeah. oh for and sure you don't realize it until like you actually and especially like again we fucking talk about this so often but like especially in europe like there's so many different places to go to in europe like just in like a two hour two or two three hour plane even a train ride as opposed to here it's like bro you know? and i also feel like in your hometown <laughs> you're just lazy like Bro, we were we had an event a couple of days ago downtown Toronto. Okay. Like right on Young and Dundas, we had a table set up, and I kept noticing the frequency of like these double decker tour buses passing by, and I've never seen them in Toronto before. Hmm. It's like sight and stop. I'm like pause. The I'm red like, ones. Yeah, the red yeah. ones. I'm like, 
what the fuck? We have this in Toronto? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like, I wonder where the fuck it's going to stop, right? So it's so interesting. Yeah. But, like, if we were to be visiting, <laughs> let's just say, Chicago, then it's like we're on forums and websites and TikToks, seeing, want to see every last inch of it before we leave. And it's like, how much of your own home environment are you not really exploring? You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Sometimes you got to be a tourist in your own city, yeah, for real. own province. Yeah, yeah you're going to catch me on that fucking on and on bus next Yeah, I've week. actually been on that before. <laughs> was it? Is when it I was like a kid. Yeah? I don't remember. <laughs> I've been on that before. Was it when you guys just got in from Sri Lanka on the boat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Went from the boat to the bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. They actually picked us up from the pier. Oh, sick, sick, yeah, sick. pretty sick. cool. <laughs> you guys must have been exhausted. <laughs> what you say? You must have been exhausted. Oh, yeah, very tired. Okay. Very tired. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, what, what, is, what does success mean to you, man? Success means doing what needs to be done, even when it does, doesn't seem convenient and doesn't seem needed. You know what I mean? So the mind state of being able to do that consistently. Well, doing what's needed when it needs to get done. Because a lot of people see all these entrepreneur lifestyle videos where a guy gets into his nice car and <laughs> does who knows what all morning and then maybe does one meeting and then has dinner and that's the day. But in reality, you're up early doing stuff you don't want to do to get to that goal that you want to see. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also about who you bring up along the way because a lot of the time I don't know how you guys got connected but I, I kept trying to do business with people that I didn't know in the past and that works too but with your close circle I feel like it's best to have people there that you've kind of grew up with that you've known for a long time mm. not even just for from a trust level like you can trust people that you've newly met but from a, like a companionative level where oh, it's like sure. you get each other. It oh, flows sure. easy oh, and then the sure. work comes natural. So I was going to bring my friend with me, but he had other commitments. But just recently we started working again together and the flow is impeccable. Like oh, I, sure. I don't know why I haven't done this earlier, mm. but it's an adjustment that's really, you know, uh, propelled me, I would say. But Dude, yeah. It's so interesting how it's not even just about like, like you said, a close companion's a big thing, like someone you grew up with. But like, there's also like people you meet in life where like the instant you meet them, it's like boom, instant connection. You know, I've had that like a couple times, a handful of times. One with Radice, I didn't know him but until like 2019. Oh wow! Yeah, like I just met him 2019. Now it's fucking crazy because I see him and hear from him almost every single day. Yeah. You know, um, it's almost like a brother bond. Same with my shout out to my boy Josh when I was out in Vancouver. I literally met this guy at a library and he became like a, a lifelong best friend. I ended up living with him at one point. So it's like, it's crazy how like you'll meet certain people and like you'll have like that, I don't know if it's the same frequency, but it's like a, a frequency where you just match and it's a very energy based thing, you know? Yeah, I, I believe there's some energies going on. You ever driving and look over at the car beside you and then the person whips their head over? <laughs> Did that ever happen to you guys? Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. I feel like there's some type of energy they behind that it. and they can feel that. And I believe there's energies between people too. I'm not you know, some hippie, but I, yeah, there's, yeah, there's something sure. there. I, I know exactly what you mean. I'm not like fucking one of them guys who knows their star signs or whatever. Yeah. It's like none of that, but just, I'm just, I'm like that. It just happens Goodbye. too often for it to be a coincidence, you know? I don't believe in coincidences. That's, ah. that's one of my sayings too. I don't, it, life is too discombobulated for coincidences to be possible. Well, yeah. it's like the thing that there are no, like if you actually think about it, there are no accidents in life. True. Like, Let's just say, like, I accidentally, like, fucking dropped something. I, I didn't accidentally drop it. I fucking let go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it, yeah. there's no accidents. Or it's like you accidentally killed someone. Like, no, you didn't. You, yeah. <laughs> you know? It's yeah. like the butterfly effect, too. Like, you change one small thing, wow. and fucking everything, everything changes. changes. It's yeah. nuts. Everything. It's so weird. Like, so we're talking about the butterfly effect. It's so interesting. At the time we were doing this podcast, we were doing a virtual when we just started. Mm -hmm. And we had a guest on who's a, a longtime friend of mine from high school. And, um... Oh. <laughs> we got reconnected, me and Buddy. We had this whole grand business idea. And that was the main reason I moved back home, which shifted the podcast to become an in-person. Oh, okay. And now, I still talk to Buddy, but like we don't do the business together. We're so cool. It wasn't we never, never started the business, yeah, by the way. Start it properly. <laughs> no, we started it, but it was just it didn't, it didn't work out as to what we wanted, I guess time commitment-wise. Mm -hmm. So we just, <laughs> we put I guess, put pause on it. And it's just interesting how like, if it wasn't for the podcast yeah. and if it wasn't for me reconnecting with my friend, you know, we wouldn't be in this room right now. Yeah. Which is so crazy. It's like yeah. those little decisions, but also like you said earlier in the podcast, mm -hmm. being able to like quickly act on them, right? Because yeah. if I was like, oh, fuck, it might not work out. I have this nice place here. Why would I move back? 
you know, him and hawing, it would have been so different, you know. You so then, five years ago, would you say you'd have a podcast now? You maybe me. Uh, in five five years ago, I actually did have a podcast five years ago. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> five years you ago. Too, what think. year was what, five years ago? 2018? 2018. 2018. I actually had a podcast in five, five oh, years no, ago. Oh no, no, mine was 2019, I think. I had a podcast in 2017, 2018. Mine was 2019, but yeah, eh, somehow back. Imagine ten years ago. Ah. Uh, no, right? I was, I was I'm just circling back to you guys asking yeah. me about my 10-year yeah, plan. Yeah, yeah. So you, you can't plan sure. everything, man. No, oh, no, I, sure. I don't think you can plan everything, but I think like there are certain times there where like, you kind of... There are certain things you got to put out there. Like when I see 10-year plan, right? I mean like the, the, the crazy idea that you have that no one else fucking believes in. Ah, uh, okay. You know? Like, like, yeah. in, like in 10 years? I'm just saying 10 years, yeah, but yeah, yeah. it could be fucking... It could be two, it, it could be, be 20, right? Like you, you, you never yeah. know. And like for me, and this gonna sound crazy. For me, one of those big ten year plans is to wrestle for the WWE. It sounds okay. fucking crazy, but it's like that's one of my yeah like big goals. Like when I did that, I'll feel like I don't feel like I did it all, but I'll go like, fuck, like that's what I want to do from like when I was like eight, nine years old, and yeah. I fucking that would be my I made it moment, right? Mm -hmm. And let alone going through the actual career if if it went to happen that way. So I, that's what I mean by like that, the 10 year goal is like, there's no actual time frame because I forgot, I think Gary Vee said is we overestimate what we could do in one year and underestimate what we could do in 10. Right? Mark Cuban yeah. Said was that. it Mark Cuban? Is that I think that? someone, someone. Well, said I, I, I've heard it multiple times, but I have more like Gandhi said it. A, yeah. ASAP plans. Like I have a list of items I want to cross off and as soon as it happens, the sooner the better. Oh, for sure. I, I guess the better question or like a different way of saying the question is what's like a big thing that you want to accomplish before you leave this earth? You know, like what's like yeah. a, What's, what, what to you would be like your I made it moment? Maybe you don't have one. I don't think everyone has one either. Because like, like Umar said, like he wants to be in the WWE one day. Fucking, I'm sure we all have like that random quirky thing. Like I want to be in a town movie one day and like yeah. fucking, like I'll make it happen. But it's like, I don't know when it will happen. And, like after that, I'll probably feel pretty, pretty nice, you know, like, geez. Like, you know? Okay. I want to yeah. pursue some type of impact, but I can't put... A definition on it right now Fair. which is fine i don't think you have to have yeah. something now because it's like this could always be changing yeah i believe i have an influence behind myself that i can empower people in a certain way but maybe it's not fully developed this might be the start of it but there we go uh, i i want to have people listen when i have something to say mm -hmm. sounds simple but oh, for you sure. know any great speaker always had people listening you oh, know we sure. have speeches that you remember to this day whether it be from politicians or celebrities, etc. Right? So Hitler, <laughs> crazy, crazy. He's a good speaker. Do you do any no comment? <laughs> for real, for real. No comment. For real. <laughs> no comment. Please don't cancel me. For real, me too. Do you actively study <laughs> too. the art of speaking, or discuss a side hobby of yours? <laughs> for me, it's less speaking and more getting through to people. Like, there's a verb to learn something, but you there's no verb to make me teach you something. Do you know what I mean? Like, okay. I can teach you, but there's no way for me to force the knowledge to you. Okay, right? okay. Like, you can learn, but there's no direct transfer. Sure. So, so limiting the friction on that, I mm. believe, is huge. So like, a, like a data download, almost. Yeah, you know, Elon, get the chips. Yeah, Neuralink. Yeah, get the USB. God. That's going to be so fucking insane. That's going to be so fuck. It sounds, it's crazy. It sounds so fake, but I, I could see it happening now. What, what, what did he say? He's, they're doing human testing, what, next year or 2025? I thought I seen something. It may be a different product, but it was a person's spine communicating with their legs because at some point there was a severance. So then they were able to walk. So I believe for those applications, it might be a good thing. But just like anything, there's good things that come with it. And then there's some weird things that come with it. Let's just mm. put it like that. <laughs> Yo, what are some weird things that come with Forex? <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of fake accounts. <laughs> oh, facts. I think one happened last week. People impersonating me, messaging people I know. I get like a text, Yo, Matt, is this you? It's like, Yo, has anyone uh, ever sent money to one of those cameras before? Uh, that you know of? They're just not good, man. Like, you know, they. I can't really respect the grift. They're not really that talented with mess with messaging people or sales techniques because like what i'll do when i'm bored is i'll hop on like a let's say a burner account and hit them up like yo because <laughs> then i'll try to see if they're like local or where they're from yes. kind of thing yes um it's always overseas but for sure um yeah, Are, no. but aren't you verified now on instagram i w bro, i was trying to do it today but 
I still got to figure it out. Because you okay. can do the meta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, not, it's not complicated. Was it like 15 easy. bucks a month or something? Yeah. No, it's like 27, 29 almost. Oh, it's 30 bucks a month. Well, I think they, it depends how big your page is too. Oh, really? I don't yeah. know. Is that a new thing? I don't know. I don't know. Crazy. I've yet to set it up, but yeah, I'll be verified probably when this comes out. Zuck, you greedy bastard. <laughs> 30 bucks a month. He literally, he literally took it from Elon too. I know. And he Elon. tripled the price. No, but yo, bro, because if you're seeing the prices in US, so when you do the conversion, that's why it's like 20 but, something. Oh, uh, okay, but yes. In, uh, on Twitter, it's 10 bucks. No, in Twitter, there's like different. Uh, oh, there's different tiers. Tiers, yeah. Bro. Gotta get that VVIP. Wait, can you still get a free one or no? I don't think so. Like, if you're super sturdy, they still don't give it to you. I'm pretty free. sure you don't. No, really? Because they stripped it off everybody, I think. So even or I believe there's a different color. They, they switched it I know a few Twitter times. is a different color. But I'm talking yeah. about Instagram right now. Like, oh, okay. Are you telling me they're making The Rock pay 30 bucks a month? <laughs> Let's see if The Rock is verified right now. Live. He check. probably says, fuck you. <laughs> nah, bro. I reckon, he, I reckon The Rock pay. The Rock is verified. Can confirm. Can I like see anything like okay about this account? Um, verified. Da, 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 da. I don't, it says he's verified. A verified badge now means an account has been verified with a valid ID and may not be well known. I don't know. I don't know if he. I don't know if he paid for it or not. Uh, the Rock, if you'd like to come on our podcast and let yeah, us know, uh, the invite is there. <laughs> yeah. Send him a cold DM. Yeah, Bro, but that, yeah man. That's that's kind of hectic, though, man. It's a bit scary. Because take it in, like, let's just say, you, you, no, but you have to actually verify with your actual ID, right? Yeah. yeah. So you need like, to upload it. So I can't make a fake account of you and get my shit verified? No. No. Unless, like, you fake the IDs Unless so well to the point Unless you take my where, ID. Yeah. Uh, but oh, we should do that for, like, a YouTube video. Like, we made a bunch of fake accounts. Yeah. Oh, we should, like, AI make a bunch of fake IDs and accounts and see if we can get them verified. That, you could actually do that. That, that could be, be a viral video. I don't know if you want to video. put that out there, though, bro. I don't know. <laughs> hey, <laughs> if someone out there is, is fucking a hustler, steal idea, just kid at us, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, this one's you, on Give us. you a little kickback on the side. Yeah, yeah, literally. Yo, okay, so let's actually quickly talk about, um, like, we, we talked a bit about, like, school and stuff like that. So did you did you go to school at all? What was the story? Yeah, yeah. So so I, I finished uh, college. It was a three-year advanced diploma. So I, I have my... Diploma came in the mail during cough, cough, but okay. um, <laughs> funny enough, at the same time that the diploma came in the mail, mm -hmm. I hit my first 10K month online. Crazy. Oh, sick. So then instead of framing the diploma, I threw that in my closet and then I framed the 10K PayPal transfer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no way. That. Yeah. Because for me, like college, cool. It's like a participation thing. But mm -hmm. that 10K was like a moment big. where I said, hey, this is possible. That's big. And so... Go ahead. No, one, I want to ask, what's it called? Um, how underwhelming was it when you finally hit the goal of 10K? Ooh. Underwhelming. I've always been somebody <laughs> where I set a goal and then I'll be like happy for 0.4 seconds. And then the next moment I'm like, you know what would be crazy? Doubling it. Yeah. Yeah. No, because I had a similar experience. My whole life I thought, yo, if I hit 10K a month, I'll be flipping rich. And when I finally hit 10K a month, I'm like, huh. It's not that much money. And I don't feel any more different. Like, I thought I was going to get superpowers. And yeah. <laughs> Everybody thinks that. Yeah. But I posted this recently on Instagram. Like, there's levels to the th things, right? Where, you know, your common person thinks an extra 1, 2K a month is crazy. For sure. Online people think extra 10K a month is crazy. And there's business people we've never heard of making an extra 100K a month. Yeah. That aren't online. You see them on the street wearing common clothes. They're not wearing no Gucci belt or whatever. And... They're raking in cash. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really something to think about, it's Perspective. Right? Yeah, man. not really as perspective. I know. Damn. Yo, so we're about to head into our final four part of our show. Before we get into that, do you have any questions for us? Or is there anything else you want to talk about? Dun, dun, dun. Final four, you guys want to discuss anything about mindset? Because I feel like that's huge. A, a lot of young people especially, I mean, I know we're the same age. I mean, you're older. You're older, okay. Jeez. Well, you're 2000. No, I'm 99. Oh, I'm, 99. Oh, I'm a 2000. You guys are the same age. Oh, okay. I mean, you're the same age. Then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're the same age. You're you're younger. But a lot of people are lacking a strong mindset. They rely on like YouTube videos, whether it be TikTok clips, <laughs> just to really get fired up and ready for the day. <laughs> they'll, they'll watch them, Andrew Tate just to, I don't know, get up in the morning for <laughs> school, right? Or like they have no discipline whatsoever when it comes to their daily lives. Sure. I think like having not even motivation that's not even the word i would say like a discipline system where 
the way I think of things, it's like I go to bed every night and I think, hey, have I done the absolute most I possibly can today to better myself, better my business and better everything I'm attached to, whether that be relationships, family, literally everything I'm attached to. Mm -hmm. And if the answer is yes, then I'm like, all right, okay, I can go to bed. If not, then I'm like, okay, what else could I have worked on better? Write notes, sort it out tomorrow kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, fair. No. Uh, what would you say is um, some prescription you'd give to someone younger to build on, on the framework of, of having a stronger mindset? Prescription. You need challenges and you need goals. You don't even need to tell people these goals. And I would um, honestly like tell people to not tell people your goals since they're so sacred. If I told people mm. my goals, you'd think I'm crazy. So he does have a 10 year plan. <laughs> no, my most, nah, fuck with you. <laughs> my closest goal is like a hundred K a month, but you know, I don't like saying it because I sound like an asshole. Right. Sure. But I guess it depends on who you say it to as well. Right. Yeah. You know, I'll feel comfortable saying it to you guys cause you're like minded, but to your common person. Yeah. I just want my business to do good, you know, and kind of dumb it down and not kind of, get their okay. ego interrupted. But um, what was the question again? The prescription, the prescription for oh, prescription. Someone, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, give yourself a goal where it's scary enough that you do not think you're going to hit it, but work every single day as hard as you can to actually achieve that. On top of it, have an activity, whether it be a sport, man, even sports, like I would just say work out every day. You know, I used to, when I was in high school, I used to work out twice a day, once in the morning, once after classes and then I'd even work part time. Like I, I was a demon, bro. When it came to <laughs> high school, like I'd work out before school, attend classes, go to work and then work out after and yeah. then do it all again the next day. And it was the same thing in college, work out, go to college, go to my job and then work out again. So I'm always like a two a day type of guy. I've kind of scaled back to once a day, not like a crazy fitness addict, but <laughs> you know, I do as much as I can now. But. Fair. What do you think, like, so for the people that have to, like you said, will go on TikTok to get that motivation or have to yeah. fucking do that random thing just to go to school or like wake up in the morning, yeah. what do you say to them? How can they consistently do things from just within? It's, everybody's different too, well, but what drives you? You got to sit down and ask yourself. Sometimes you need nothing in the room, nothing going on. People love distracting themselves. Every time they're on their phone, walking, and if they're not, they're listening to music. Just sit down and be in your thoughts for a little bit, mm -hmm. you know? Or dudes always chasing a girl just to fill their free time. Because that's what it is at the end of the day. They don't know what to do in their free time. They're scared to be alone, you know? Mm. After college at a certain point, I was single for two years. By my own will not just because I couldn't get any girls, right? <laughs> <laughs> I want to clarify. But, you know, just to focus on myself and say, okay, I want to be the best person I can possibly be for the next lady that comes into my life. Mm. I want to be the best person I can be for my parents that have raised me all my life. Mm. I want to be the best person I can be for all the time and effort I've put into building myself. Fair. Like, imagine 20 years down the line you look back and say, hey, I could have done that a little bit better. Ooh. I don't want that. Looking back at your life, what is one thing that you feel like you could have done better? I'm always hard on myself, so I can list a hundred things, but it'd be, I'm very consistent, but I'm crazy enough where I, I genuinely think, hey, I could have done it better with honestly everything. Because I feel like the highly successful people and highly motivated people are just crazy and they think, hey, <laughs> I could have done that better. I could have done this. I could have done this. It might even keep you up at night, you know? Mm -hmm. I try not to let it keep me up at night, but I always think back, hey, I could have done this better. But I try not to stress myself out about that and just focus on, okay, how can I execute going forward, knowing that information? That's fucking, That'll be mindset, yeah, man. That's good. That's good. That's a great mindset to have. Yeah. That's, that's how it should be. And then, do you, oh, what's it called? I want to ask you. Yes. What would you say is a differentiating factor with someone who's always tried business and fails for someone who tries and they succeed? Don't try and just do. Don't try and <laughs> just do. What's more to that? The people who do and still fail 
Yeah, I mean, okay. What are they doing? Like, I see a lot of people online say, hey, I just started a new clothing company. Mm -hmm. Bro, there's enough clothing companies. We do not need another one. <laughs> okay. True. I've always centered all of my businesses. I mean, if somebody wants advice, I can give this. I've always centered all my businesses around achieving a result, a monetary result for someone or some business, and then taking that difference as a profit share. So mm. when I first started with online business, I was running Instagram bots for people when those were really hot and doing yeah. well. So I'd approach personalities or businesses and say, hey, I can get you followers, I can get you engagement, I can get you sales, give me a cut of it. Because you have a customer, you don't need to charge them until they make money. Mm. Mm. So they'd be an idiot to say no. Yeah. And if you, it, it's all about positioning yourself and understanding the exchange of value. That's what people don't understand. Mm -hmm. They don't understand how to make themselves valuable mm -hmm. rather than just receive a paycheck yeah, for yeah, their activities. Yeah, yeah. They wanna say, hey, oh, I worked really hard. No one cares. <laughs> what result did you get? That's true. Uh, that's, a, that's, that's actually fucking fire, man. Yeah, yeah. Fire. Well, um, let's go into our final we're going to go into the final four questions. Yeah. Was there anything else you wanted to discuss before we jump into the final four? You guys got it all out of me. Yeah. Perfect. All right, sick. All right, all right. So the final four, the first one. If you had to swap lives with someone for 24 hours, who would you pick? I was asked a similar question when I was younger. And... They said, who is your idol? Who would you want to be for a day or whatever? And I always answered the years growing up. This is how I knew I was different. <laughs> I was like, how can I pick one person that I'd want to change lives with when everybody has different qualities that I admire? Mm. Mm -hmm. It's similar to how I like went out to seek mentors along the way to get me to the place that I'm at right now. But the person that I'd change lives with isn't famous isn't known, but is living the life that they want on their terms. So you don't even know who it is? No. Because <laughs> would you want to be very famous? Well, just for 24 hours. Oh, 24 hours then? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe like Elon or something. Yeah, Elon. <laughs> be pretty dope. <laughs> yeah, Buy yeah. some rockets or some shit. <laughs> It'll be a long, boring day, bro. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it'd be a long day work. Bro, he's just fucking working all but, day. But but imagine you no, see like you a, see that twenty four hours yeah. and see how he operates oh, and then go I back. Go back. Maybe uh, if I had to choose one person, this might be a, a one off. But Peter Thiel, you guys uh, know who that is? Yeah, no, he he wrote no. zero to one. He wrote zero to one, and zero to one is essentially if you're a billionaire, you're a zero, or if you're not a billionaire, you're a zero, and if you're a billionaire, you're a one. And he co-founded PayPal with Elon Musk. Yeah. Oh. Previously named. X.com X, okay. or Zip2 and then X.com. No, Zip2 was WinRAR. Or something like that. Yeah. Okay. And then now when Elon changed Twitter to X, it's kind of homage to that. Homage. But wow. he, he's part of that PayPal ma mafia, they call. But I feel like that's somebody that's behind the scenes enough where you see the guy on the street. You don't know that guy. Yeah. But he's making things happen. He actually had the largest net gain in a, a Roth IRA, which is like a, a, like a RSP, a tax deferred. A savings account he made like a billion dollars tax-free crazy wow yeah man crazy you should read the one it's actually a fire book yeah. okay so yeah. next. just rip oh. it on youtube that's what i do when i'm oh, driving yeah. <laughs> fair fair all right next question we're gonna ask is who would you say is the most motivating person of all time for you are we saying in person or online whatever just all time whatever first yeah first thing that comes to your head is the most mm -hmm. motivating person of all time for you I will say this, I don't try to rely on others for my own internal motivation, but I would say the most relevant person right now, I think it had to be Tate. Hey. Fair. Because he does a very good job. I don't necessarily look at the person and what they say, but I look at what they do. Mm. The way that he's been able to cultivate essentially a cult behind him, a cult Pretty following much. where he has supporters all around the world Pretty and much. he has a positively inspiring message. That's motivating, oh, for mm. sure. right? Are yeah. you in the real world, world with Radish? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. No? You, you Whoa, see him on Discord. Welcome to the real world. <laughs> okay, our third question. If your whole life from the day you were born till now is written in a book, what would the title of that book be called? Execute. Execute. Nice. Mm, I get simple. Okay. Yeah. Now, the last question we ask all of our guests is if today was your dying message, 
What would your last message to the world be? Is it like the world ending or is it just I'm dying? Oh, I guess you, just you're dying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, bro. Uh, message to the world? I'm trying to think of something clever here. We doing rock paper scissors? Yeah. Fuck. W. What? Two or three? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. You guys are me. My message to the world, if it was my final day, would be. <laughs> oh man. Something I never thought about. You know, we're super young, so you never think about you know <laughs> passing on. But <laughs> yo, honestly, bro, I've asked this question like fucking forty times. Yeah. Never thought about myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's either. It would be something along the lines of just, you know, living true to yourself to go on and just live true to yourself and be as happy as you can be. And I wouldn't chase happiness as just like that one thing, but, you know, have everything sur surrounded and uh, kind of complementing your happiness because you can't do everything to make yourself happy. But, mm -hmm. you know, you can try. W. Sure. No, I like yeah. it. I like it. All right. Yeah, that, that was good. Guys, oh, we forgot to do the call to action in the middle. Fuck. That's fine. It's That's all fine. good. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you leave a like, subscribe. We'll put everyone's links down below so you guys can go check us out. And until next time, remember, stay seeking success. Let's go.